a meeting to order. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, I've got one. Let's go ahead. Go for it. Uh, so the first one that I received additional communications from our attorney about uh, a case that we might be involved in. So I recommend an executive session to review the case. Yes. Okay. Any others? Uh, under committees and volunteer support, I'd like to add a discussion about the mural on the town garage. Okay. Or we could do it. Um, any others? I have one really quick item, which is on sheriff's department. Um, I guess it's probably a follow up. And it will be about um, who is interested, if anyone, in sheriff discussions on budget and um, just general uh, contract discussions. Okay. And there's Duncan or Donna. Um, first item is review orders. Let's jump right into that. Uh, Allegiance Trucks, Vehicle Maintenance and Repairs, uh, or Parts and Repairs, 133.83. Uh, Brasso Fuels for Diesel Tank, um, 4,800, sorry, $4,821.54 with $477.44 of that due from the village. Um, CI. CAI Technologies for Assessor Contracted Services, $7,800. City card payment for postage programs of $543.20, but I believe that's library, correct? Yes, anything that's a 50 library. So the next few, uh, including the office supplies of $56.10, adopt an author of $46, and the ARPA grant expense of $18.99. Additional expense of postage, $25.06. Tree board expenses of $73.68. Uh, $73 Office supplies of $14.99. Tuesday night live expense of $194.05. And then um, general supplies for $69.08 with a grand total of $1,400. Sorry, $1,047.81. Uh, any questions on any, any of those? Okay, Compass Minerals of America, the Highway Course Winter Salt, $2,049.38. Country Home Center for Skate Park Site Maintenance and Repair, $67.67. Gale Hall permit refund for highway policy permits of $300. Gold Star Products asphalt patch, um, $697.16. Gorman Group dust control supplies, $4,410. Um, same Gorman Group for dust control supplies, uh, $9,270. Grand total of $13,680. Great big graphics, skate park site uh, maintenance and repair, $38.97. Green Mountain Trailers, purchase current year, um, $17,515. The lock for the trailer, $54.95 for a total of $17,569.95. Skate park administrative costs to Donna uh, Griffiths, for $44.44. Um, Green Lantern Johnson Solar Electricity, um, total of $835.57. Johnson Hardware and Rental, Rake Shovel, Brace, Paracord, Fuel and Skate Park uh, Supplies, a total of $223.45. Johnson Public Library, petty cash, $125.27. Uh, Lamoille Woodcraft Picnic Table, 
for conservation expense, $499. Laraway Youth and Family Services sandwiches for fundraising, $220. Um, Office Depot, looks like, um, business solutions for paper and such, $197.30, half of which was due from the village. Rabbit tracks, uh, conduit and wiring, $950 for the trailhead build, building. Is that the underground? Uh, I would have to get into more detail about exactly which part he was involved in, but that project, yes, that is that project. Uh, Raven, Raven Paft, or Faft, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, for Racial Justice Committee, $134.14. Rick and Pam Operly for Grant Beautification, $200. Casey Romero Skate Park Fundraising, $8.29. Uh, Staples, Staples Business Credit for supplies, um, a total of $339.77, of which $77.77 is due from the village, and an additional $135.48 is due from the village. TD Bank credit card payment, uh, facilities and maintenance, miscellaneous expense, gymnastic and dance, and office supplies totaling $234.94. Vermont Electric Co-op Highway Permit Fund, um, $2,000 for permits. Vermont State Treasurer marriage license, $350. Poor people. Uh, Village of Johnson, total due. Yeah, please. Um, so Village of Johnson, total due from for holiday sick pay, office administrative salaries, social security, insurances, retirement, insurances, and postage, a total of $4,526.67. Um, Vemers Retirement Fund, due, sorry, a total of $5,922.34, of which $299.43 is due from the village. Walker Construction, a highway permit refund of $500. And Jasmine Uris Community Oven, uh, $287.35. Um, vendor, other entertainment costs, Sophia Barard, $100. For Tuesday, that's a Tuesday Night Live expense. Uh, Tuesday Night Live band expense to John Freeburn of $600. Tuesday Night Live band expense to Michael Razafi. Uh, like I slaughtered that name, $500. Donna Griffiths for Racial Justice Committee, $299.20. And also for um, I assume it's our minutes, $1,004.64. I just realized that, okay, I did not. Not, re yes. not repeating myself. Um, CAI Technologies, tax maps and related, $450. Central Equipment, of Central New York, it looks like a spray nozzle for uh, Winter Parks, $22.59. Eastern Sales Tax Bills, Printing and Publishing, $410. Gorman Group, a uh, total of $9,619.28 for desk control. On that one. Yep. yep. We've already had one for about well, two charges for a while back, 4000 and 9000 over 13,680. Was that the same was vendor? Year, right? This is the same vendor. Oh, okay. Year, but it's That's why they're That first set was last fiscal year. Which one? Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, we're hmm. going to be taking 9,000 out of the current year's budget. That's probably going to go into last year. 
that will go into last year as well? If they're filling what they had a little bit of a filling backup, so we got a bunch of them late, late and all at once. So is that all the calcium we're going to need for all worlds for the beginning of summer? I expect so. I, I, 22,000. It is just about our entire annual budget okay. of calcium uh, that we've been building for recently. Um, we're well stocked, I know that, so I, I think that we're in good shape. So just to be clear, Rosemary, the I see that they all are different invoice numbers, that's good, but the cost was the same last year as it is this year? Like the unit cost? The unit cost was right. Uh, but so you, wait, wait, say that again? The unit cost was right. We're paying a little bit more per gallon uh, than we were last year, but that didn't go into effect until, I believe, April 1st. So are we sure that the invoices we paid are reflect the proper previous amount? We've got to do a little bit more with them. We just got them today. So we shouldn't sign orders is what you're saying. These, I mean, if it's here, it means it's signed off, right? I believe that they're signed off. Yeah. So we, and them and off. Okay, we should check. Yep, yeah. I'm happy to, to double check. Okay. Uh, thanks, Eric, for calling that out. Uh, Gorman, okay. Um, and by last year, we are since we're beyond July 1st, you mean fiscal year ending 22? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Leslie Grant, TNL Performance, $600. Green Mountain Trailers, um, a tarp supply, $249.95. Johnson Hardware and Rental, shoe allowance of $178.50, uh, $195.50, and a refund for parts and supplies for a clamp of $8.98 for a total of $365.02. Um, two Snake Live Performance, $1,200 for Karubo Music Productions. Probably should have watched some of these people play before so I can pronounce their names. Um, watch Lamar County Sheriff's Department, quarterly installment uh, for dispatch services of $17,171.50 and um, patrol $127. Uh, thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars for a total of one hundred and forty four thousand nine hundred and forty six dollars and fifty cents madison national life insurance a total of five hundred and seventy dollars and eighty seven cents of which forty one sixty two is due from the village um, manash sand 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 and more sand for a total of $32,367.79. Uh, Pete's equipment sales, roof damage for tree, brush, removal, and mowing, $6,000. Uh, Stitzel, Page, and... Roof damage? That's for rental. So six thousand was the cost of the rental, not the cost of the damage. Can we just edit that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher Legal Services. $1,575.10. Union Bank loan payment for the tractor and interest totaling $17,711.21. Vermont League of Cities and Towns member dues $5,504. Uh, Vermont League employment resource quarterly payment 
of Fort Unemployment Insurance, $292. The League Property and Casualty for General Insurance, $11,000. $536.50. So this group is That's a the first installment of the So just how you administrate it. Uh, some of these invoices are last year, June, May. Some of them are, are this year, 7 1. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I was look at this grand total of our expenditures total about a quarter million dollars. Um, well, without any revenue coming in yet, your checkbook might be a little bit uh, short. The checkbook's okay. So you were covering uh, the shortfall anyway. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Perfect. This, uh, <laughs> to know that part. Do you have anything else you can approve? <laughs> we may not be okay. But Okay. And the invoice date on the on this orders is what we look at to determine whether it would be in year ending twenty two. So you have to go and scrub this at some point. Yep. That's why I wanted to get most of them done on that first set of that. I mean, just flipping through. That last, second to last page that we have has a couple of invoices with a seven. A couple of big ones, the sheriff's department first quarterly payment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then Brian's gonna look at that other. Oh yeah, double so check the invoices from the department group to make sure they line up. Correct price. Two questions, I think. On uh, invoices, yeah, go ahead. Um, so I was approached by a number of with regard to reimbursements to individual people. And her comment was that it was her understanding that under the purchasing policy. Um, maybe Brian or Beth can help me out. We shouldn't do that under the purchasing policy. We should do that. Her concern, she is a member of a board who in the past has done many persons. He is no longer doing that because the purchasing policy says that it's not going to happen. What is what does the purchasing policy say on that regard in terms of reimbursing individuals? I can speculate what we also have. That's why we have this. We have this here for a reason. We just need a um the table of contents. Go ahead. I was going to say we could discuss the minutes from June 20th while you're finding that. Yep, let's do it. Good idea. So what you Are you entertaining a motion for approving the minutes from June 20th? So moved. Second. Okay. Here we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ains. Ayes have it. Another question I have from what I was looking at is we're paying from the Well, I'm going to give this. Go ahead. Yep. In my sense that a lot of these, a lot of these payments we're making are coming out like Tuesday Night Live is self funding. Isn't 
but they are in reality count funds. Regardless of the hours of the yeah, of course they of course they are, but I'm I'm more concerned about the town budget. <clears throat> Not all these little individual funds that really aren't. The net zero. You're not worried about net zeros, yeah. essentially. Yeah, my, my, my major reason for bringing up the question is one I was asked about, and then I wasn't quite sure what the policy really was in regard to that. Um, and if we're, I, I am fundamentally opposed to people paying the sales tax and then the town. Reimbursing them, including the sales tax. I don't like it. People are not going to pay the sales tax. The individuals can still go out and buy it, but they can use a single use purchase form, which they can get from Rosemary, which prevents them from having to pay the sales tax. Yep. So technically, we have purchasing agents that are identified, um, regardless of how large a purchase is, from what I can tell. Based on our policy, um, is that what you were going to say, Ryan? Yes, we have designated purchasing agents uh, who can approve things. Uh, we strongly discourage for the very reasons Melissa Duncan. We strongly discourage people from reimbursement uh, because it could be denied. Uh, you might buy something that the purchasing agent does not feel is necessary. And is under no obligation to refund the purchase. Uh, and also, you're paying sales tax on uh, it. It is not expressly against policy, but it is strongly discriminated. So, that's the piece that, that I most concerned about is pay, payment of sales tax. And it's a relatively simple thing. If somebody comes to you and says, and I think we just need to emphasize. If somebody comes and says, I want to go, you know, buy supplies for 6085, then give them a single use purchase, um, you know, tax and tax certificate as we can do. Bring it to the vendor, add it to the vendor, then it's going to be So I, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm suggesting is. We already have it as a policy. I think we need to adhere to it. it sounds like. Yeah. We need to. It's, it's an enforcement question, and it's. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of carrying the wish for the board is that we should be turning down more of these requests that didn't come with a. Uh, that paid the sales. I just don't even take use of our town's funds because you're paying a, a sales tax on everything that we as a town would not have to pay. It's not um, a huge amount of money. I'm talking. I get that. It's, for me, it's more than. No, I mean, this usually comes up on here. You pay a sales tax. You know, sub $100, pretty low purchases. Where? Somebody's willing to pay for it out of pocket. Uh, it could be, but it's, it's not a good use for money. It's exceptions just, for a weekend purchase going to be made for the rec committee or for the well, Tuesday night might be during the week, but where they may not be able to come in the office because of the office hours. But those should be the exception and not, you know, it should be very rare. There are going to be, yeah, I mean, along those same lines, there are going to be services that are provided that, is, that are not goods, right? So just we'll have to be clear. And if we have an expectation of an invoice for those services from an individual, what does that actually look like? Usually it's just receipts that are available. I'm saying there's no goods. Oh, for the, yes. Um, right. Or we agreed to pay somebody a hundred bucks to facilitate a whatever. A bulk, uh, 
referee. Or a ref. Or, or, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of circum. We pay a lot of people out that are individuals that we're paying for a service. Right, but that's not, you don't pay sales tax on services. We don't. Uh, so we you're just saying. Purchase order for. Right, Dr. What's that? Yeah, we still need uh, a purchase order to pay that. If we had a purchase order system, it would Okay, that's what we do. I mean, I don't, yeah. Okay. Noted. Um, any select board issues or concerns? I'm concerned that Mark didn't bring pizza to this meeting. He said that for the first of July. Okay, any valid issues or concerns? <laughs> yeah, we did. Just your salary. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for that. Okay. I forgot it was 6 30 and not 6 45. It's been like six months you guys have even started. Do you have a, a phone on you? If I yeah. take a picture of this, can I actually I'm going to bring this over so you can take a picture of it? Any other issues or concerns? You'll have pizza on the 18th. Okay. There's, I did have one that I forwarded to everybody on the issue of Connie Hollow. There was an issue with an ATD and a dog, and went all ever calling. I talked to uh, the sheriff's department to Roger. Uh, actually, just right in here. Sure, it was an ATD, not a victim. It was an ATD. It was. I got it. Didn't. I think I, I read it and I didn't oh. get the impression. Oh, did I miss? Because there was complaints of ATVs and drunk drivers. And oh, 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 did I misread it? Okay, there's a lot in there. I don't think there was ATVs mentioned in that. Okay, then there was drivers and there was issues, safety issues addressed anyway in the email. Speed. Can you just hear the cemetery on the bridge? Yeah, you can have a seat. We'll let you know when, when it's up. Um, no worries. So anyway, I have uh, Roger is looking into how the deputies address the call. Maybe it was a car. That was my mistake. If it was, it was a lot there. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to bring that up. Did, did you talk with her, Beth, or just? I did not talk with her now. So her comment about the you know, the drunken boys club further up the road and lots of drunken drivers. That's, I have no idea if it's true or not, it doesn't really matter, but it proves to me that that might be a place where we would drop Roger to not spend that. I did talk to him about that, yes. Like, I don't know what, I don't know the story. I don't know the truth behind any of it, if it's just speculation. But what it sounds like is that there's a safety concern and maybe it's worth taking a look. Um, so yeah, he was, he's along thinking along the same lines. Uh, okay. Any other issues or concerns? Okay. Next up, treasurer's report, Rosemary. I think that we Thousand dollars last year put towards this year's taxes. So 
will be done separate. So, yes. Uh, we'll have more than $100,000 in surplus when we end the year. Oh, okay. That's so good. were there other items involved in the budget at the time? Aside from the $100,000 to be applied to things for your taxes, were there other things that were set aside as dedicated? There were a uh, couple well, well, uh, dedicated areas that we were putting money into for uh, reserve loans. There wasn't anything else that was active expended. Reserve for capital equipment and reappraisal and i believe that it was split more or less evenly between capital equipment uh reappraisal and tax anticipation so will we get a report yeah i guess there's some time that will ask us what to do with this um, so Rosemary, the, you said paving isn't included in this, and is that um, dust control costs that nine thousand included? No. Okay. Basically, nothing. Nothing that was supposed to be year twenty-two in the orders we did, which was most of the orders, except the big chunk for the second. Um, dust control and the law enforcement. Those are the really big ticket items, and those will not be in this. Law enforcement is for the current, for the new year, yeah. For, yeah, 23. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Rosemary on? on Budget. When will we close out the year? Probably not towards August. Okay. Is that typically when we close out sometime in August or September? Yeah. All the bills. Yeah. Because anything that's going to hold us up in particular, so it'll be yeah. as far as I'm aware, it's normal. Have we received invoices for mowing? Can you follow up on that too, Brian? Uh, what else do you have, Rosemary? Okay. Um, do we have setting the tax rate? Like, that's in that H1. Oh, okay. You got moved down. Okay. I knew it's here somewhere, but. Okay. Let's go ahead and do plan purchases. What you've got for, for one plan to purchase, this is a new post driver for uh, public works. Um, this is uh, purchased with funds from our insurance company, Passive. Uh, they're making, uh, every year they make grants for um, safety equipment and other things that reduce the risk of injury. Um, and the, the driver that we have currently is one that's mostly fabricated by our crew. Uh, it takes two people to operate and two trucks to operate. Um, it takes a tandem with an air compressor and the pickup with other equipment in it. So it's pretty labor intensive. Uh, it's not purpose built. I guess perfectly competent, so there's no real fear of an accident with this, but it is getting on an age, takes several people to operate, takes a lot of equipment to operate, a new driver that they can fit on the back of the pickup, and help them to do a lot of prep work for, will save us quite a bit of time. 
and we don't have to pay anything for it. And one person can operate? One person can operate. Um, and this is fully funded by the grant, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, the grant's also picking up a couple of direct safety items also that are small items, so they're, they're not rising to this threshold. Okay. It makes it feel like great. What kind of posts are we talking about? Great stakes or? Uh, fence, uh, fence posts and sign posts. Yeah. So, big. Steel sign posts. Yeah. Motion to approve the purchase. Says. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Abstains? Ayes have it. Uh, okay, committees and volunteer support, Brian. All right, first up, we have a resignation from the education. Secretary wants and then resign. I'm I'm motion to accept Terry Watson's resignation from the education committee. Second. And a motion and a second. Any discussion? Is she passed? She is not. Um, was and moved to Eden. I want to say Eden too. Uh, I just want to thank Carrie because she, I know she did a lot of hard work for our town. So yeah. it's very much appreciated. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I guess that's hard. Okay. You'll post the opening. Yep. On Facebook. And we'll, we'll post it. Okay, great. Uh, next up, uh, the oven committee. Uh, Do you want to vote? Oh, yeah. All those in favor? Oh, I got it. Aye. I just have it. Okay. okay. Uh, the oven committee would like to pursue uh, grants uh, to continue their, their service goals. So we go to pay for uh, you know food items and things that they'll, they'll cook. Yep. Any matching funds? Nope. Fully funded. Uh, I don't remember. <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't have noted here. That. I think it's Rise for Month. It might be another group. It's a, it's a group we've worked with. Right. Yeah, th this is a motion for the community oven committee to apply for the grant. Rise from offer. Just apply for the grant. Just apply for the grant. Should I vote? I think I'm on that committee. Don't vote. Resign? Yeah, you should. Recuse. 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 Oh, don't okay. resign. No, you're not allowed to resign, resign. but you may recuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion? Second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. We have one abstain. And I said it. All right, uh, next up is the cemetery fence. Uh, wait, first up is mural on the garage. Oh, right, thank you, I'm sorry. That, we added that one. So the, um, the trustees have raised an issue um, about us putting the mural up on the garage without their consent. They would like to have a vote on it instead of being informed. Um, sorry, sorry, but I'm a little bit jet lag, jet lag brain, so I have an excuse. But is this coming from the chair? Yes, it is. Okay. Is okay. it the village garage? I think it's kind of What's the issue, Brian? Uh, because the buildings are jointly in, uh, the village has raised a question. They believe they should hold a vote on us putting the mural up on our garage. It, we call it our garage, but it is a joint mail. It is. And they claim that it's not general maintenance, which it's not the general maintenance. So they they want to have a vote on whether or not it should be allowed? Mm -hmm. I guess it, uh, the best way to put it is at this point, they intend to have a vote. And what? <laughs> <laughs> what happens if they vote now and we vote yes? <laughs> That's why we're bringing it up. <laughs> okay. What does happen? What? I mean, well, I'll not speak out of turn. What does happen if we have a conflicting vote? We did not finalize the um, memorandum of understanding about how to handle town and village jointly owned buildings. Um, 
Although I will point out that the sticking point in that discussion was not anything to do with the town and the village each having independent authority on their own building. The sticking point was how to handle the uh, old mill house. And at the time, we had a pretty good understanding that each entity maintained its own garage independently. But this is a new select board and that's a new trustee board. Yep. It's pretty clear cut on this municipal building, the mill house building, jointly owned. Uh, it would require two votes, one of the four select board, one of the trustees. But where it's a little more glazed on the garages where there is a basically a gentleman's agreement that uh, we each maintain our own garage. But that was it, maintain. I mean, it, <coughs> if they, excuse me, if they are asking for the right to vote, I don't see where we can deny it because it is a jointly owned property. Uh, when do they meet? Monday. And is it on their agenda? Do you know? Okay. So do we need a formal motion to hold on the mural? And well, we've already approved it, so now it just it requires the trustees to approve and then it go full. Well, when, when the uh, they started fundraising for it and getting supplies. When the motion was made, it wasn't pending village approval. It was just to do it. And then there was a discussion about whether. Yeah, I think we said pending or just to inform. About it. Inform. Yes. But if, if they're indicating they want an equal say, I don't see how we can deny it because they have equal ownership of the building. The thing is, I don't think it changes anything that we acted on. It sounds like it's just informational at this point. And hopefully that's like the village passes it. Um, and it's a moot point. Fingers crossed. Should, should we have Brian contact the, is it the beautification committee that was doing it? Mm -hmm. And just let them know that that would not hurt. The vote is better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on since we don't really have much more to talk about other than opinions. Uh, following up from past meetings. All right. So we're doing the cemetery. Um, so the discussion we had, uh, we were pretty surprised by. A you know, little sticker shock on the, the estimated uh, cost of the fencing the option for presented um, Following up with them, we had a couple suggested alternatives about either splitting up into uh, you know two or more projects to get all the fencing done, uh, or fencing the street facing side with something a little bit more decorative, and then fencing the other three sides with something a little more utilitarian. Um, they will not hold the price for us uh, if we split it up over multiple years, but there won't be any penalty or extra cost associated with that. They're just not going to hold the price if the price of materials or the price of labor or something goes up. You know, we'll pay a little bit more. So it, it probably won't be an even split, but there's no there's no penalty associated with that. So they're, they're willing to break it up into multiple years. Uh, the other one that they quoted us is uh, doing the split rail, which is like the fencing that's there now across the street side, and then a uh, black wire fencing along the uh, back and sides. Um, apparently, we're on mute and have been the whole time. <laughs> They've missed a riveting conversation. Thank God. <laughs> um, well, we we're not going to take comments, but I do definitely wanted to hear. <laughs> that was earlier. Okay. So now, okay. Sorry. I'm just catching up. 
Thank you. Uh, so Brian, I'm curious, the text is cut off, but the split, uh, split rail says that it's 42 inches high. What is the steel post and wire height? Do you know? I don't know. Um, Actually, I think I might have it. I have a picture of it that I can share. It's nothing, it's not a chain link fence, but it's, you ever seen a wire fence? Well, it's it's wire fence. Yeah, yeah well, it's nothing that, 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 Is that post yeah, it's a good place for it. That's a really good point, actually. Did you, um, while we're all looking, Trevor and Janice, did you guys have anything that you wanted to add to the conversation? Yeah, yeah. since we're on two sides of the cemetery, we don't bother the cemetery. I don't see why. You guys are thinking putting thousands of dollars into a fence. Is the cheapest route the, the cedar site that I think that that is there? Is that the cheapest route? By the way, that's the front face. That's the cheapest option for something a little more decorative. Uh, and the wire appears to be the cheapest option for the, the other three sides. So you feel it's necessary to put the fencing in like that? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out. Not the fence, actually. Yeah. So we're curious. Can we answer that? So, I don't know. The select board is statutorily required to set cemeteries to keep livestock out. And there was a complaint from a citizen in town that that cemetery was not fenced. So we. We, we have to fence it. Okay. Is there a, no, we're just looking through options on, on what kind of fencing. Um, and you've got the boundaries and totally figured out. I mean, I know there was some information sent to me on measurements, but um, the measurements got to depend on where you start also. Yeah. yeah. We think we have a pretty good idea of where the uh, where all the boundaries are. There's some old fence posts and things that we use to base it on. Um, and our intention is to mark it before the fence goes up. So mm -hmm. yeah. the neighboring property owners will have an So you must be the one that talked to me about it. Yes, yeah, okay. so. All right. So we, uh, we will have it marked with stakes. Yeah, once we're getting ready for it. Before it's installed, and you guys could take a look at it then for the boundaries. Would that work? Or? Yeah, that's fine. I just was trying to with pricing and everything we need now with the conversation. Mm -hmm. We never bothered it, so why would it be a problem just to let it set the way it, you know? I mean, I understand yep. going where the house is and, you know, making sure there's a line there and making sure of the road so it looks good, but yeah. if you went down even a few lanes, one lane, like it ended in the down through. I could understand that, but I just wondered why it had to be the whole thing and cost an extreme amount of money. Yes. That's why we talk. Yeah, that's why Brian referenced splitting it up for multi years to at right. least get one side up and going. We had some discussion in the last meeting about splitting it up a little bit and whether or not that would be um, more advantageous and cost efficient to do it. Or effective and not right. feel it in your pocket quite as much in one year. Yeah. I take the electric fence there. I just can take some off. That's cheap enough, right? Yeah. That's actually a good point. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have electricity source up there, but. Well, yeah. My son is up in solar. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you have any other questions? I don't know. We did 
you know, the, the secretary really doesn't belong to us, right? I mean, we're getting told it's Bidwell Cemetery, we're getting told it's this, we always thought it was Broad Cemetery. I'm kind of trying to figure out also, where do we fit in? You know, is this something we're supposed to figure we have a responsibility for, or do we not? The history on ownership for that is not especially clear. Uh, you know, we were not able to locate a deed for anybody okay. to own that cemetery. Okay. Um, it, it appears to be grow cemetery. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, at, at one time, a public cemetery, uh, not just a family cemetery. Right. That's what I was going to say. Do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I, I, I spent some time. The, it was originally the town of Sterling, of course. Yes. Um, and the, the land records for the town of Sterling reside in the town of Morristown. Deanna French um, did a lot of research trying to find out um, you know, the exact antecedents of that cemetery. Mm -hmm. As near as she could find out, there was an, an original, the original person that owned the land where, where the farm is now, yeah. um, set aside a parcel of land for the purposes of a cemetery. She was never able to find any actual written documentation in the land records or the selectman's minutes or any of that. And, you know, I having looked at those records, I can tell you there, there's not much to them. Um, you know, there. You know, my, my thought was if Deanna French couldn't find it, Why do you want to I wasn't you going to find it. So I honestly, I looked at the research that Deanna did, um, and I, you know, I told you guys at the time, um, if Deanna didn't find it, I probably wasn't going. So I will say that it's not unusual for, like we don't have we don't have a deed for Plot Cemetery. We don't have a deed for Whiting Hill Cemetery. There is mention in some of the very early Salkman's minutes of laying out or setting aside a burying yard, mm -hmm. um, but there's no actual deed for it. But I'm, but I'm, but anyway. So it's not that in and of itself isn't unusual okay. that that would happen. As far as I know, that's the history. Well, we don't want to own it. Right. Yeah. So you're not responsible for it, ultimately. That's what that boils down to. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, I think part of the reason of uh, the idea of the fence is, and I think it's an important thing to stake where we believe the corners are, mm -hmm. and then to get agreement. Brian, you met with Gary, right? I did. I met with Gary and I walked. That because that is right up against his actively used right. property. And, and so then we understand that there are other property owners involved in the backside. Yeah. Do you own both sides, both adjacent sides that Gary doesn't own? Gary doesn't own any. He doesn't, he doesn't own any of it. Oh, okay. He owns the center. Okay. He works out of that because it's his mother that owns everything as far as the house and the property on that side. Then the road is on one side and we've got the other side. Yeah. So you have the back and, and the other side. Mm -hmm. And that, do you own that, Janice? Yes. Okay. So it's not you and Trevor own a no, piece of it. It's like his father and myself and my sister. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think if we put those stakes up and we had concurrence, if you agreed that that's where the stakes were, you know, which the mm -hmm. stakes represented the boundary. And we agreed that then, then I think it makes sense for future generations yes. to record that in the land record so that we don't have this conversation again. Right. I don't, I don't think it will be we. <laughs> 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 um, so, you know, Roger had said that down, and I know you talked to Gary, but I do know Gary was also a kid. So, Roger and Leona would be the better of where that boundary originally was because they grew up there and you the big tree 
Yep. There was two other ones that riders that have gone that stopped from probably be there, might not, but anyway. That tree is the boundary, so to speak, is going straight down by the garages. It would be off the garage some, but it wasn't a long ways off. No, the 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 marker on the or the, the line on that side is pretty clear. Like yeah. I said, between old fence posts. A couple of grave markers and other things. There's not a lot of room in between the two. Right. That's but what he said. Uh, there isn't anything on the other side. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, there isn't anything on the, the, towards Gary's place. Like oh, that. Uh, one, like we're going to be really close to that garage that's closest mm -hmm. to the road. This is things protruding out probably in the grave. Uh, I think there's a, a couple of things out there, but yeah. not, like, not no, no permanent yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah, not not been there plus ten years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe should be one of those rights. Yeah, but it, it'll be a little bit easier once we get some markers up. And you're showing sure what you're doing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like. Brian, you'll work on getting the markers up and then you'll reach out to Janice. Are you a good contact? So you reach out to Janice and Leona, it sounds like you should probably talk with also. Um, and we'll move forward. Okay, good. Um, so, yep. Next question, are we gonna be able to afford that? Yeah, that's a good question. It's an important one. It is. We don't currently have what do we have in our budget? Six thousand. Six thousand. And that's for all cemetery. Is that was me? But I guess we don't have anybody that's bid on cleaning and writing headstones yet. Do we? I have to go back with that. I think I got a couple things in while I was out of town. I have to go back into my email catch up. We had sent out an RFP for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Work on that. I I so yeah. So that would use up the entire year of the plus some. Two times. Two years. Plus. Yeah. If we did the whole thing. Um, and the first side? Uh, unfortunately, it would, have to, it would have to be the back, all three, the, the non rolled sides that were split it out. And then do the roadside separate? We could do that. That would only put us eighteen hundred dollars over. Well, the roadside is actually the that's still old antique and holding up. It could use some attention, but it's right. in yeah. decent shape. Right. Uh, it is really the other three sides that are the ones that don't have it. Like I said, there are some old fence posts, but it's a post here or there, and the fence between them is down. You know, there's not much there on the other three sides. Um, yeah, we could start with the, the back three sides. But even so, that's over budget. By yeah. yeah, there's we're not selling long time. Okay. Does somebody have a suggestion on how we want to proceed? Well, if we want, I mean, we've got a very limited amount of money for cemeteries. We spent very much of it towards any fence, then there's no cleaning, no uh, stone repair or anything that's going to be done in any of the cemeteries. What if we pop this until next year and budget for a fence along with the normal maintenance? Yeah, as an additional thought to that, Eric, um, I am a little, um, I, I have to believe that we might be able to get somebody else to bid on this. Maybe their bid is fine. Maybe their bid is, is right where it should be. But I'd be a lot more comfortable if we had a couple, two, three bids to look at rather than just one. But do you think there'll be a great margin of difference between what we've got? And bids that came in. If there was a couple thousand dollars difference to you, that's 
real money. It's real money, but it's still way over what we have budgeted for in, uh, revenue. For. It, it is, and I, I would only say that I asked Rosemary a side player question. Forgive me that. Um, we did not. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> we, did, <laughs> we did not spend the entirety of this year's um, line item. Um, so you said we got six thousand for next year. Five. You said five. No, six. Uh -oh. six. Okay. I'm pretty sure you spent six. Okay. Um, so as of uh, as of the end of the year, we had spent. 1390 or 1400 bucks out of a $6,000 budget. So we could conceivably apply some of the prior year's surplus toward a this year's expense, a current year's expense of defense. Looking at the budget as a whole, the prior year I don't think has that much surplus. Well, that's why it would really be nice to get the report from Rosemary at the close of the year. And if nothing else, I would say to your point, Eric, we could defer the decision on whether I don't think we have to make this decision tonight. Okay. So it sounds like I'm hearing defer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm deferred. How, how many lineal feet? We have it's right. 390. Mm -hmm. on the back. And it also says, I would like to just point out that uh, it also says that all posts requiring rock, rock drilling and hydraulic concrete add $100 per post. Okay. So this is just the baseline quote. You guys are probably going to know better than we, but I'm guessing there's a lot of land in that area. expensive for 500 feet of fence. It's a, it's a lot of money. For, I mean, and to Eric's point, if we, if we know that, we, then we've got nothing available for cleaning or repairing stones. That's fairly important. Okay, so Brian's going to mark boundaries. Important. And then, yep. He's gonna, well, he's gonna mark. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mark, he's gonna mark boundaries first, right? Then he's gonna reach out to Janice on and Leona on confirming boundaries. I already have that. And then you can have discussions with um, Janice on what possibilities are for. Um, I'm gonna add in. I'm gonna talk to our insurance about. Perfect. Using volunteers to do the. 
Yeah. Well, when you do that, bear in mind that if two parties are building fence, there may be specific statutory language with regard to two parties building fence on a mutual boundary. So insurance may not be an issue. And there are a lot of, well, I actually looked up cemetery statute once. <laughs> so what was I thinking? There's quite a bit out there. I was surprised at how much was out there. Who's our fence viewer? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have three. Oh, no, but they don't do much anymore. Who are they? Well, it should be Mike. Yeah, right should be Mike Dunn, Matt Kenny, and it's Marco still. Marco, I feel like it's too. Yeah. I don't know where it is. If we were doing it, I have numbers that would probably be Doug. Is it Doug? Okay, is this irrelevant though? Yes. Yeah, let's not talk about fence viewers anymore. Okay, so we have the action plan. Interestingly, the, the league has a position advocating releasing towns from liability on cemeteries that are not the town owned cemeteries. The league is doing really good work recently. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's a statute. <laughs> no, that is true. Oh, okay. This isn't this year, so. We okay, yep. Yeah. The horse is dead. Uh, thank you both for coming in. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. Uh, there's you. some hot topics coming up. <laughs> nope. Let's try. Okay, economic development. So I made the, you have the new draft, it has the changes requested. Out that were referenced by the select board. Okay, let's look at priorities. Quite a number of tasks. Uh, I took out references. I think of the references on, on judging criteria. And I cleaned up a little bit of the language in the description of the town. Where are you uh, planning to uh, focus? When we're ready for it, I think uh, posting it to. Uh, about League of Cities and Towns, and I want to talk to uh, a couple of contacts I have with consulting groups and see if we can find a, a consultant that might be interested in it. Uh, and there's a, there's a group out of Burlington that does uh, RFPs for government entities that we I mean, post to. We use free press, they're so expensive. Seven days. Seven days are very expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not a newspaper, but it's it's an organization that just does government contracts. Can we peaceful if somebody wants to do this and lives in Wyoming? I think that would be part of the judgment about comparing them to other candidates. Uh, yeah. Do they have qualifications and things that make up for the fact that they're not local? Can they demonstrate that they can do a job like this without being local? I have yeah. my doubts, but if they can demonstrate that, then I say we give them a fresh eye. I like fresh eyes. I think fresh eyes can be really important sometimes, but. No, I didn't read it. Oh, it their town administrator is 22 years old. Oh, really? <laughs> what? Richard? Enisburg. Richard. Richard. I think it was Richard. It's the first time they've had a town administrator. They hired somebody. Good for them. For what is the Richard name? Yeah. I mean, that's some serious freshness. <laughs> good for them. Good for, yeah, good for them. 
Okay. Are we ready to circulate? Is there anything else? Thoughts? I'm ready. I think we should get this out. Yeah. I really, I just want to advocate for making this a true competitive bid process. You know, as far as posting it in a newspaper, maybe that's passe, maybe it's not. I just feel very strongly that in order to be a truly competitive bid process, it needs to get out into some recognized publications, um, you know, where people will have a opportunity to bid on a competitive basis. And Works in Progress does RFPs, um, Vermont Business Registry or whatever it is, they do RFPs. Um, Can I just ask a clarifying question since everybody's talking RFP? Like, I know it says RFP, we talked about a consultant. To me, a consultant and having an RFP are not mutually exclusive. You can have a contracted person playing a consultant role, doing important work that is not associated with a company that would submit an RFP. And I think we need to be careful when we require a sealed bid that we're not reducing our candidate pool because we're looking for a contract service with a, a organization that would submit an RFP versus an individual submitting a um, resume. Right, saying that I'm gonna, this is who I am, this is my resume, I want $40,000 versus different organizations competing, submitting bids. Are you inclined to take somebody that says I paid for a thousand dollars a month? Or well, when you're putting out a request for a proposal, you're leaving it up to the individual or the business to structure a proposal that you then review and act on. I hate to say this, but that sounds really stuffy to me. And I would never I would not personally. I might consider something like this personally, like I'm not going to, but you know, in a different world, I might. If I felt I had to structure it in an RFP format, like I've gone through RFPs before, we've submitted them, we've received them through the companies that I've worked for, and that's quite a stuffy process, and stuffy is the right word. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. Why is it stuffy? Because you're requiring a format a very specific format from whoever's submitting the application, where if they've never submitted an RFP before, is that putting an undue burden on the applicant? My suggestion on that was if they've never done an RFP, we don't want them. But we, but we might want them. Well, but you're talking two different things. If you're, if you're asking people to submit resumes, um, then I think you need to define the scope of work and what you want them to submit a resume for. I want them to submit a resume for this. Or if it is an agency of whatever type, that's totally cool too. Sure, we'll take an RFP from an agency, but I do not think we should limit our candidate pool because of a formality. But if an individual person, there's absolutely nothing to prevent an individual person from responding to a request for proposal. If I see a publication for a request for proposal, uh, I don't consider that a job opportunity. I mean, I do if I am a contractor, maybe, like a, a I don't know, um, maybe I'm not communicating well. I feel like, Mark, you're speaking my language here. Uh, it's sort of, I mean, I immediately went to, are we going to put it on zip recruiter and on D, or are we going to just be looking for a business? Because, I mean, if you're going to put it out there on the on places where individuals who may be eminently qualified to do this, we, we should reach out to them too. And then are they going to go through an RFP or are they going to submit a, you know, a resume and say, 
these are the towns I've worked for. This is what I've done. I can do this. The way this is structured, the select board reserves the right to reject any and all proposals. And if you get a resume that you really like, you could say, let's interview this person. I really hate to say that I really want to say tomatoes, tomatoes, it doesn't matter, but I think it does. Well, this, this says that we're requesting proposals from qualified individuals or firms. It seems like RFPs make it easier for us. It's, then the burden's on whoever's submitting it to tell us what they're proposing that they would do for us. I've always thought RFPs were easy to compare the apples to apples type of thing and, and be able to select some person or some group, or whatever task. Um, but I guess if somebody just wanted to send in a resume, and, and we have a high flying resume, then that would also look competitive. I, I guess I do like having RFPs. We specifically because, say in the proposal for requirement that we want the background of the firm. If I'm an individual, by the way, there are studies around this. If I am a female individual, most likely, I am disqualifying myself right away because I want to match as much of this as possible. And it says you're looking for a firm, not an individual. Well, let's change the wording to firm or individual. Where do you see the code down there? Oh, down there. Because up here, it's there, there's, I found two spots where later in the document I refer to just the firm rather than firm or individual. Um, in the, on the first page, it says the town of Johnson reserves the right to reject any or all proposals. Uh, it goes on to say, evaluated by the town based on firm experience, so we can add individual or firm. And then on the second page, uh, the first bullet point said background of the firm. We can change that to background of the uh, individual. Sorry. Yeah. We should just say applicant. Yeah, we need to say we need to use terminology that is inclusive, that is not exclusive throughout the document. Is really my point. Yeah, and if we. I think that sounds good. I, I'd be happy to change these two. Yeah, I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't think we need a firm to do this. There may well be individuals out there very qualified. In fact, I suspect we're probably more likely to get an individual than a firm um, to do this work. Mm -hmm. So I, I have no, that's not my issue. But I think so, if somebody wants to send basically a resume, I certainly could look at that and say, well, this is that person's proposal for services. I've done X, Y, and Z. We could decide to interview that person. But I also think, you know, it's, it's not that difficult to put together a proposal. People, people in business have to put together proposals all the time. They're doing the rest of it. I don't, my hesitation with putting, if you're asking somebody to put a proposal together that's talking about ideas and how those ideas could come into fruition, I'm all for putting a proposal together. If we're talking about putting a proposal together to apply to an RFP, like what is the value we're getting out of that? I guess is the question I'm asking. What's the value for everybody involved? And 
you know, we need to talk inclusively, not exclusively, and we need to be talking about the value we get out so that we can see who our best candidates are. Hopefully we have multiple. Uh, well, I think the first thing that you said is the more important part, the proposal. I don't view this as applying to the town to submit a proposal. This is providing a proposal for the town to look at, to say, pick me, I'm your best choice. And, and I, I believe that if you can't make a good argument why we should pick you, you're probably not the person we want doing economic development in this town. Um, I would just propose we strike the background of the firm altogether. I think that's irrelevant to a good candidate. It's the size of the firm. The whole bullet. But if it's an individual, don't we want to know, don't we want examples of what that individual has done? I'm just saying background of the firm. I'm saying that first bullet is irrelevant. The second bullets talk about what they've done. So couldn't that say background of firm or individual? And the proposer should or state the size of the firm and the number of, and nature of professional so staff to be assigned to this engagement. Background of the applicant. And if you were an individual, your answer to that bullet would be, I'm an individual, I don't have any staff. Mm -hmm. so the rest of that, the John, can I feel like you're just not hearing me. Like if I'm an applicant, if I'm an applicant for any position, me personally, if I'm applying for any position, I literally am going through whatever the um, posting is and saying, yep, I can do that. Yep, I can do that. Yes, I do that well. Yeah, I have a lot of experience with this. But this is not an application. <laughs> Thank you for cutting me off. My point is, we, if we really want to be inclusive, there's a lots of studies out there about how to get a good get a good candidate pool. And if we use terminology and whatever we're putting out into the world that excludes people from applying because they feel like they don't meet major a major portion of this, like what firm do you belong to and give me all the background of your firm, you're excluding people. And do we want to do that? If we want to do that and the board wants to do that, totally cool. I'll disagree. I'll agree to disagree. But I, I'm not sure that's what we want. And what value do we get out of having that information, really? The value you get out of having background information from a person submitting a proposal? No. The background information on the size of the firm, how many people will be working on this engagement, what is the background of the firm? Why can't we ask that as part of our interviewing process? Do we have to use that in the language right Why up front? Why can't you just say background of the applicant? Period. And then strike the rest. Strike the rest. And if you're a firm, you're going to say how many people you've got, how many people would work on it. If you're an individual, you will say what's your background. You know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Economic developments that the applicant but, has complete under 40,000 acres, as well as the first page. Totally agree. Did you get that, Brian? Uh, you, I'm sorry, you added something that I did you know. Just like the, you know, the third bullet, instead of saying economic development projects that the firm can complete, just if we did a control F and replaced it with applicant everywhere, and yeah. then we re read through it, that'd be good. Because I see that- It comes up again in several paragraphs. Yeah. yeah. So I think that I, but I hear what you're saying about it, uh, more inclusive language that I can make those changes throughout the document. Um, so I guess the next thing I'd like to ask the board, if I may, would you be okay knowing the nature of the changes that I make? What do you mean? With making the change, making these changes, and then publishing, <clears throat> or do you want to see it again? Um, are you are you talking about publishing all of this? Or publishing, what are you publishing specifically? Uh, it would be, I guess it would probably be another one like the, the application where we come up with a shortest version and we're paying by the word. But 
for most electronic publications, we would just publish this as a PDF. A lot of the online sources have the ability to add the RFP so that people could download it yep. as a PDF file, but the actual ad would be you know, for, for sentences. Yeah, just a couple of sentences and a URL of where to go get the. Um, do we have the option to have townofjohnson.com slash? We don't have provider. a short version on that. I've used a. Uh, the bit.ly or, or whatever. Or, yeah. Uh, and you were on yep. one of them. Yep. Uh, when I'm publishing in print so that it's not a. And that can link out to the PDF. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a little intimidating for folks because they've got to follow a URL that isn't descriptive. Yep. But it's, if we're using something like tiny URL that people are familiar with, it's a little, it's a little, little, little level of trust. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, but no, we don't have the ability to put, we put it on the front page of our website, but we don't have the ability to get short URLs on our. So that doesn't answer Brian's question, I guess. That was more questions. Is the board comfortable with Brian making these changes, removing firm and replacing it with applicant, striking a major portion of the first bullet on the second page? I guess we can ask that. Yep. The board comfortable with that, or do we want him to make the changes and come back the next meeting? Mark, what do you what do you think? I think he should make the changes. Here. Eric, what do you think? I think that's good idea. <laughs> okay, Evan, what do you think? I'm comfortable with Brian handling it. Duncan? Well, I didn't hear what Eric said. Eric said he liked my idea. I like I like Eric and Mark's idea. You didn't hear it. <laughs> I just did. You just did. <laughs> so, okay, so Brian will make the changes, send them to me, and then publish. Yeah. Okay. I trust the Check. Get it out there. Get some people in. That actually does look This is the stuff that started with where we going to put this. And then it went into. And where are we going to put this? Um, we're. We're going to start a YouTube channel. And post I guess <laughs> there's still a question about getting it out in a paper. Uh, I don't think there's any newspapers that are especially that this is going to do especially well in. Um, I think that I think that Duncan has a point about that we haven't used the newspaper for some publications where we might have gotten applicants from the newspaper. So I think we've missed some opportunities there. But I do think this is one where. I don't know that the newspaper is going to be a very effective way of getting candidates. Okay. Um, but we'll be publishing it on the OCT Works in Progress with the, the organization that I was trying to think of the name of. Uh, so Burlington does government RFPs. But not like I'm happy to. If I like have it. more it's expensive. Can we put it on LinkedIn? And and we can all share it. Oh, well. LinkedIn. Yeah, I think we can get it on LinkedIn. Yeah, Eric's got a LinkedIn. Yep. Um, <laughs> and we could <laughs> also put it on Facebook <laughs> on the town Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with as much free advertising as we can. Planners Association has a monthly online newsletter. I don't know, but uh, that'd be a good place to. LCPC was one of the groups that I was going to try and communicate with directly to make sure that they knew this was out there and could submit. We, so, could, we could make it to like page five of their yeah, job list. They might be able to uh, help us with if there is something for planning associations. Yeah, I, I would never advocate for putting it like in the free press where it's super, super expensive. And the response we've gotten from them is 
mill. We've never had anybody come from them. However, I do see value, even in something like this, putting it in the news of citizen, because if nothing else, the transparency for our voters seeing that we're advertising something. And they won't see these other places. They would never go to those. Can you use the news and citizen as an official paper of publication for notices, et cetera? I mean, yes, it does cost us a little bit of money, but. Yeah, the news and citizen isn't too expensive. So even though our return from there is pretty low, the stakes are low too. So. But, but probably the bigger thing is that transparency with the voters, they're seeing that with the posting something. Yep. There are some people who still don't look at online stuff. Um, I know that's a generational. Beth and I discussed that on another topic. <laughs> some of us that were looking at it less than less. Okay, so. Um, okay, okay, so we have a whole list of places. Is that enough? I'm content with that list. Um, I have one more place, which is Emily Rosen. Where, where does she work now? She's uh, Memorial Rosen Partnership? No. Uh, yeah. Emily Rosenbaum works for United Way. Well, I think she doesn't work for, I don't know where she works. She works, I think she's linked to United Way. I think yeah. the program she's doing is through United Way, but she's hired by somebody else, I believe. Anyway, her newsletter that goes out, if we could get that in that newsletter, because I think it goes to a lot of people. Hopefully. Sure, I'm sure you'd be happy to publish it for you. Yeah, cool. Okay, right. Atlas. Uh, Atlas has updated the contract and moved the village uh, as requested. Also, uh, they were able to extend funding a little bit, so it is. Uh, this is more of an update, right? Because the last motion was with amendments. This has the amendments. The chair's already got the authority to sign it. You want to know one? I don't believe that we signed it. But there was a motion for the chair to sign it with amendments. The okay. the amendments. One particularly interesting thing. I heard you correctly. You said it won't cost us anything. It will not cost us anything for this. Session. Do you want a motion or are you? I mean, I don't really remember to be completely honest. Okay, motion the chair to sign the amended. Uh, Doesn't mean it didn't happen. I will point out one other thing that I want to change that did not make. Uh, it still lists me as the point of contact. I don't have no particular There's desire to sign it. Can I amend it? Can I amend it? Can I amend it to Brian signing it? Sure. Amend it. For a second. Okay. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Brian, do you have any idea how much longer this testing might be required? They have not given any indication. Um, on a couple of years, they've said that we look a little bit better than we do in other years in terms of. You know, the way that the, the petroleum is migrating through, but we haven't had any clean years or anything like that. So it, it's some years are better than others, but there's no, we have, I don't think we've had a clean well sample yet. So, <clears throat> so, and the time. Yeah, we'll be all on the road. Okay. All right. Um, we had a motion. We had a motion and a second, yeah. and we had some discussion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, ayes have it. Aye. What? I didn't ask. Have to. Everybody said aye. Okay. <laughs> LVRT. Uh, our insurance has responded and they, uh, they 
they will provide and they are providing coverage and have will continue to do so while we're mowing the rail trail. Uh, the rail trail. Say that one more time. Sorry. Uh, our insurance will cover us while we're mowing the rail. Uh, there is no interruption in coverage. Uh, they, they are willing to extend coverage. They have been, and they're willing to continue to do so in the future. So, did you have further conversation? I feel like that's not what I read. Is that what I misread? No, they they agreed that they. They thought the uh, risk was so low that they agreed to. Uh, to the but they said it. that there should be they would a conversation with the state yeah, for the right. state accepting. Yeah, yeah, I feel like there were some coulds and shoulds in there. That didn't make me feel and so I don't good. I think that DLCT really understands the difference in mowing a roadside where people drive by in a car yeah. and a trail where people are on bikes and walking. I mean, as it is, yeah. as it is our town crew shoots for worse weather, which makes it more dangerous for them to do what they're doing. Yeah. So we could have an employee compensation, you know, workman's compensation claims, possibly. I guess and, I do care. And I tried to get the point across to them that when this rail trail is complete, the number of towns that they are sure that are going to be doing the mold, and some of those towns may not look for bad weather days. You know, the liability, I think, for DLCT is an unnecessary liability because it's something we are doing for the state as asked by the state. I would think the state would have the liability, but um, DLCT didn't seem to see it as an issue. Yeah, okay. I'm really they did that. say that there should be question asked to the state. To the state. But they, didn't they also they said if, if sovereign immunity of defense can't be used in a covered claim, that the passive coverage would step in to defend the claim. Yeah. So we are covered. We, I think whether this is a good idea for BLCT to offer us that coverage is a whole different story. Yeah. But it's a good thing we're not underwriters. Yep. <laughs> so, so maybe, Brian, do you have somebody you could ask at the state? I've, we, I've made contact uh, with the procedures are changing as of July 1st. I don't have everything ironed out about how it will proceed, but we will need permits now uh, for mowing on the rail trail. And they will themselves be mowing it at least once a year. I'm led to believe, oh, I shouldn't get it too far out ahead of that, so I'll believe it when I see it, but it has been indicated to me that they will be mowing it at least once a year. The state, the state. The state. Yeah. So we need to pay the state for these permits? I don't believe there's a fee associated with the permits, but I'm still ironing out the details. I just got in contact with the, the state has a <coughs> system as of July 1st, and I, I've just made contact with the person who's handling the new system. They're, they're further ahead on it than I am, but there's still a lot to learn. Do you have any idea if in that permit process they will be looking for a certificate of insurance from the municipalities that might be looking for? They haven't indicated that to me yet, but I would be surprised if they aren't. I, I would, if we were issuing a permit for something to do work, we would expect them to carry their own insurance. So I expect that they We'll expect that from us. So Eric, to your point, that'll be to yours, and that'll certainly up the hand for the LCT if 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 they're going to require a sort of insurance, and we say to Vicky Abear, we need a sort of insurance for mowing. Um, that's certainly going to make them take a good hard look at it. Yeah. But now we can't mow it because we don't have a permit. Yeah, we that's not in place yet. That's not in place yet, but He's we will July have a permit. Part. Today is July 6th. I just haven't had a chance to get one to get a permit since the weekend or, or to finish exploring what the. Well, so, we do need a permit? so, because we, we procrastinated, we can't mow, is what you're saying. Less. We did not procrastinate. I know, right? We're trying to protect the town. No, we procrastinated. 
that's in writing from them. So, I mean, that seems to me to be pretty defensible. And I mean, it can't be any more dangerous than going beside the road where people are walking and biking. It's considerably more dangerous. There's not numbers of people walking and biking beside the road. Maybe the rail trip. Go down, go on that rail trip. Yeah. Get yeah. run over by folks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Regardless, no. I would like to pursue getting an apartment and mowing the rail trip. If we're doing that, we should keep ours and send the state a bill for maintaining their right of way. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm not joking. No, I. I'd say go for it. Kansas um, is legal in Johnson. Sorry for my ignorance, but what department at the state do we get permit this permit from? And how does that relate to the rail trail? Probably the rail division. And I actually do ask for a question, and my question ultimately is. Uh, well, are these two agencies talking to each other and how are they supporting the towns that they're asking to do this maintenance kind of to Evan's point? Um, it is the Rail and Aviation Bureau. And Jackie Casino is the Rail Trail Program Manager. Okay, so it's the same, one and the same. Yes. We've, for the last couple of years, we've been mowing it twice a year. Uh, before that, we were mowing it once a year, and we had a number of requests to mow it more often than once a year. Um, we're mowing it twice a year, and we're still getting requests to mow it more often than twice a year. Are we mowing it with like the brush hog that? No, well, the vertical brush no. on the But there is a, we don't have the clearance issues that we have. Yeah. Okay. okay. So at this point, nothing we can do because we need a permit. So Brian's getting a permit. So is that going to, if I say we aren't going to mow until we get the permit? We're not going to mow until we get the permit. I believe that I can get the permit and get this sorted out. Yeah, I, I think that it. Well, they're still asking us to maintain the right way. I mean, it, it is the permit process. I would expect it to be pretty straightforward. Can you ask uh, them if you have a person for a whole term? Straightforward. I could yeah. see what they say. What did you say? Ask the same person from the rail division a whole time list for the town mowing on their property. <clears throat> Yeah. See what they said. You can't do this it's the first time sitting here and having this discussion. Can't match. We might be. I mean, the changes just came in July. <laughs> we are pretty smart. We really might be. <laughs> a second time to allow Tina to stay at the same time, right? So <laughs> yes. here we go. Okay. Uh, assessor services update. Duncan, I think that's you. Assessor's update. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rosemary and I attended uh, a meeting of four, four people last week. Um, Terry Saban was activating. I think that the ask, the ask is that the, the, the towns that were present felt that it was probably prudent to see if the Monroe County Planning Commission could act as the service provider and be the person that actually paid the shared assessor, paid the benefits, paid, you know, all that was done by LCBC, which they have the statutory authority to do now. They can enter into service agreements with communities for shared services. I think, I think there's a consensus of everybody there that they were going to go back to their boards and get asked for conceptual approval to have LCPC act as a service provider. 
um, I will say being on the LCBC board and on the executive committee that uh, certainly has to go through LCBC and that LCBC and that it may or may not happen. So all I'm asking for tonight would be if you think it's a good idea, use LCBC. If you do, are you conceptually willing to move the ball forward along those lines? Not this time. Obviously, too early to have a cool one call for actual price. It is, and that would be all part of the proposal that we do back to you with, I think, because obviously, if it's going to be full time and have benefits, that's going to cost a little more than if we could find something. Right in you know, 20 hours a week or 18 hours a week. Is this about Terry's? I'm surprised to hear Terry was there. I'll just be candid. It is not, it, the, the concept is, I think, I think Terry um, is less, she's not looking at this as a business model or a business opportunity. She's looking at this as being trying to get people in, involved. Um, okay. And, and interested in finding some live bodies. Um, so uh, my, my, my own take, she said she would do it for nothing. She was, you know, she would volunteer her time. You know, I will say that I don't think that's appropriate. I think she should be paid if she's going to serve as a consultant or an organizer or whatever. Um, just me. Um, but that's none of that's been really worked out. But I think Terry, I think Terry was willing to go down that road. Now, I will tell you that is. Not likely to involve at least initially a role in reappraisal concept like what we have with that. What this is going to be for basic previous maintenance services. And as we, you know, as we talked about a role in reappraisal, that's going to be saved for a future year of future discussions. Without getting into the weeds, you Envision where it would be uh, prorated by number of parcels per town. That was discussed, and it seemed like a reasonable way to go. It would be to use the, the town's grand list as the basis for allocating costs. Grand list parcel count or grand list value? Uh, parcels. Parcels. And this may include towns that are not in the county. Yeah, Virginia's, the city of Virginia's was. Actually, one of the hmm. person or one of the people on the Zoom call. They're very interesting. Of course, they're pretty small. Right. So, you know, we may have to look at, to your point there, they don't have a lot of parcels. Right. But they have a lot of, you know, they're a business, they're a commercial. Office. So, you know, we may have to look at some combination of, you know, Parcels, the number of parcels versus the value. All, all of those things would be, you know, all I'm really looking for tonight is do you think it's even worth going down this road? You know, our options that I can see right now are if we don't like it, we choose not to participate in this process and put out an, I guess it didn't use the word RFP, but. <laughs> A uh, request for bid, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Um, request for services. Request, request for services, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, and see what we get. My suspicion is we won't get much response, but we can go that route. I mean, I think conceptually, I'm in favor of exploring it. Me too. Belay on. Park. I like the I, I personally for assessing all assessor related services. I really like the idea of it being administered at a county level. If the planning commission is open to that. Well, you know, Hyde Park had initially said that they would potentially be the parent or host organization, but 
Ron does, he's retired officially. Right. Yeah, and so he isn't going to be around. And I don't, the select board member that was here, he didn't stand around and say, oh, what tight sparks wanted to do it. He, he pretty much said, SEPC sounds like a good option to me. Yeah. So, and again, I think you know, we still have a pretty big hurdle whether LCPC wants to do this, and it would require the concurrence of, you know, five or six, however different, however many communities come up with it, with the desire to do this. It's, it's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think you have the blessing. So we're conceptually done. Sounds like it. Thank you. Okay. Next up. All right. Next up. Uh, the apartment inspection from the Hoka Mass. Uh, so, went and inspected the property last week with Mark. Um, you know, asked Mark to help give it his experience as a landlord. Uh, yeah, it, it needs to be cleaned and probably uh, some repairs are required. Can you clarify it needs to be cleaned? What does that actually mean? Meaning the 10 wheel needs to back up to the second floor window and it will be filled. Oh, it will be filled and it will not be cheap. For it. It'll use the whole miles of Just it for the dumpster. And then the general, the general structure I mean, the, is not anything. I, Personally, I don't think we should be involved in renting that thing out. Even though it made money for us, the smoke alarms, it's not up to code at all. It for never, second, it never made money for us. But, but, what yeah, you I, want but I, you know, I'm, I'm a landlord. I like to make money off of any places. I wouldn't rent that place. It just isn't. The stairs are steep. The railings are out of code. The smoke detectors are all and tore off the walls. This the floors, it's just if we can give it to somebody to I would cut it loose. So would would the recommendation be that we retain uh, we have nine hundred and seventy five dollars to take three deposits? Yeah. Yeah. And I prorated June's rent for 17 days and they owe two hundred and ninety dollars. They haven't paid yet. They haven't paid that yet. No. Open they haven't paid yet. And, and I recommended that Brian contact them and find and get in writing that the stuff there has been abandoned or given to us because otherwise you fall into this whole thing at the store. And I did and was able to actually find it today if I was able to hear back from uh, Richard that it is abandoned. So we then we move forward with that. We have typically have you got that in writing? Yes. Yes. We have 14 days to let them know we're keeping the security deposit because of da 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 da. And that's critical that we do that for the 14 days in writing for that. So do we need a motion to that effect tonight? Let's do it. I make a motion that we notify the tenants. Uh, that the town intends to keep all of the nine hundred and seventy-five dollars. I, I would I would amend that that the town intends to recoup any cost we we uh, incur cleaning and cleaning and and restoring it to the, the condition it was when they moved it, and that way it. Do you want to make the motion? Yeah, I'll, okay. make, I'll make the motion that uh, that Brian contact send a notice to the renters that um, stating our costs as applied to their security deposit and just leave it at that. Whatever our costs are, I suspect they'll be way above the security deposit. Include in it, you can include in it the unpaid prorated rent. And who knows if they paid their water 
incurred. There are, no, we were paying a lot. We were paying, we were paying. Yeah. Okay. So any expenses occurred have to go against that deposit. Are you still mushing? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so did, he, did he notify the renters that mm -hmm. the property in writing the cost that we have occurred and that they will be subtracted from the security deposit? Yeah, okay, then we have a motion. Wait, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Donna, do you have questions on the motion? Well, I guess saying that they'll be subtracted from the security deposit, that kind of leaves open the question what if? You do subtraction and end up with a negative number. Are you going to send them a bill? Yeah. So, so I wonder if that's the exact word you want me to How about applied against the security deposit? Why? It's fine. I would still send them a bill. <laughs> Not that you get it. Mark, do we, do we have to notify them? Uh, do we have to make a formal accounting and notify them of what those expenses are compared to the amount? Yes. Contained? Yes, we do. You know, we can't just willy nilly guess it. And do we have a timeline? 14 days. From when? From whenever they were, they moved out. They brought the keys back July 1st. So July 1st. So we have to do that. I would all write out a legal to be because the penalty for not doing that is 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 getting double the deposit back. Is what? Double deposit back. They get their deposit double and given back to them if we don't follow the letter of the law. So Brian, we'll need to make this a priority to get the actual costs broken out. Yeah. And the cost should be whatever the real costs are from the sounds of it, not adding no, up to their, well, not adding up to the deposit amount. Like if the cost for cleanup is gonna cost $1,272.13, that's what we put in the letter. Yeah, yeah I've been in contact with the, the materials that do our, uh, Custodial work here, and they're, they've got time and capacity. They'll give us a proposal for cleaning that. Okay. What were you going to say, Duncan? I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding Mark correctly that we actually had to incur those costs within 14 days, or we have to just notify them that we will be incurring costs. I don't know the answer to that. Because like you know, getting the repairs done is going to take longer. Yeah, right. It can't be incurring a cost. It would have to be an estimate of cost. Can, can you check on that, Brian? I'll look into that. I know that we're going to get we get cleaning done within fourteen days, and the cleaning can be pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, um, especially if you add in a top truck. Yeah. The, dump, the tipping fees. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a 10 yard club. Okay. What else do we need to do for the. I think that's going to be less than the motion. With the motion, do, do you have we, have, we have a second. We had questions. Are, are there any outstanding questions for discussion? No? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Evan walked away. Um, eyes have it. Four minutes no. Well, okay. We added one though. Sheriff's budget and contract. So um, I talked with Roger today, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and I have also talked with the towns um, of Wilka and Hyde Park. And I just want to make sure, I think we talked about this before, but I just want to, I guess, make sure that we have the right people for the right discussions. Um, the three towns getting together um, to work through contract, everyone seems very eager to um, dig into that. So, um, I'm curious if anyone from the board would like to represent that. I would like to, I'll just throw my name out, but I don't need to be the only one. 
Um, so is anyone interested in sheriff's contract discussion? I'll tell you what the second part of the question is. The second part of the question is, is anyone interested in um, budget discussions, sheriff's department budget discussions? Because they'll be separate conversations. I've done the sheriff's budget for the town the last couple of years. I'd like to continue. Um, I'd be happy to have there's a difference that. between, I think, what you're talking about and what Nat did formally on the board in working through contract, or maybe you both did? Nat accompanied me for the budget okay. negotiations. Okay. And I'd be happy if the board member still wanted to participate in that. It's useful for the board to be, you really get a greater level of detail about the operations when you have to go through the budget line by line. You're gonna be busy in. You're gonna be busy in. Uh, okay. So you two, Mark, you're out. Yes, sir. I'm out. What are you interested in specifically? I would be more interested in your part, but I can see how in the contract part. Yeah, how that. If I mean the budget. I'm interested in both of them to the extent I want. I need to know more. But I need to know more about every single thing we do. After 20 years, you know everything. You don't have to know everything. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a huge budget. It's a huge it's part huge. of our budget. It's yes. a huge part. It grows substantially. And I just. Okay. I need to. Got it. So your interest, basically, if we don't have a quorum, you'll have an invite. How about that? That sounds like a point. Okay. To either, um, to either one. Yeah, I got it. Okay. And Eric, you're out. You just want to do your one. I'll do the yeah. union negotiations. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have it. Evan. I'm on the union negotiations, too. Oh, well, you were that? Okay, good. I knew there was somebody else. Oh, wait. Right. So it's not Mark. It's Evan. Yeah, right. It's Evan. Okay, Mark. Like the guys in green. <laughs> Duncan, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I would be happy to focus more on assessor shared contract. <laughs> okay, good. So let's write this down. Mark and Beth, Sheriff. Evan and Eric. I'm going to write this in the binder in a second. And Eric, the union. Um, and then Duncan, Duncan is or assessor. Is assessor, assessor. Is assessor. With Rosemary. Assessor. Yep. Perfect. Will you stop it for Rosemary? You can slap it, just don't do it on camera. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that ends that one. Okay, next up is job description for town employees. Yes. So uh, it actually contains a lot of job descriptions. Uh, this is 23. You're welcome. This is starting on page 23. Uh, this one should say draft. This is the draft job description for the economic development coordinator, which we did not have to bring this up. If we're going out for grabbing yeah, some proposals on that, uh, is there something we need? Yeah, we need to finish it. We had talked last time that we had a little time under uh, time to um, spare because we would need to get applicants in first anyway and get the proposal out. So, but yes, we do need to finish it. Well, it wasn't clear to me in any of these whether or not we were supposed to. I, I did not go through this with an eye towards 
making any changes in any of these suggestions or recommendations. So, well, that, that wasn't really my intent for our first pass through these. It was more here's everything. Are there any of these that we want to open up and, and talk about? Yep, we don't have an action plan. One thing that we did talk about is we did talk about Brian's job description actually, because it includes economic development pieces in that. Uh, yes. So the uh, rec coordinator is an engineer, and we just went over that. You're right. That's another one. Right. That's true. And that's another one that we said we were going to fix before we hired. Uh, so that does it add economic development to like? Thing I did have economic and some community development community. pieces in there. Um, it seems like the uh, highway operator and highway foreman positions were fairly recently dusted off because we did some hiring. But yes. you mean the public Last works year, operator? In fact, yes. Yeah, the public works operator was. Uh, and the administrative assistant it was last year also last year too that's so, true so really the only ones we need to look at would be the economic development and the uh, record coordinator which needs to be done well, too, right? Right. 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 that's true does that answer the questions <laughs> So do we want to make that a work assignment for a meeting coming up? For Path, please stop it. Uh, I think maybe what we could do is, in the meantime, we have these in our packet, except the rec coordinator. Brian, if you could email out the rec coordinator. But maybe we can mark up the economic development and the town administrator job descriptions. I think we actually took a stab at the town administrator at one point too, but we may have privately, but I don't think we have reports. Oh, maybe I, okay, maybe I did. <laughs> it's very possible. Um, anyway, we should all take a stab at marking up and giving feedback, and we can have that working session you're talking about, Duncan. Yeah. Seems to me we ought to mention in here background tech. I don't see it for. You know, you're going to pass it physically, you're also going to pass it back. That is true. I mean, yeah, that is true. Yep. I can tell you when I worked as a consultant for several other neighboring municipalities, background checks were absolutely something that they wanted. Yeah, I'm just saying it should be qualifications. If we're calling out specifically. Pass it physically, you might as well pass the background check. And we do background checks. On we do. Uh, when we hire somebody, the board just makes a motion to hire pending. Pending background check. Added. I guess it can be added. But we have. Uh, if we want, if we've got passing the physical. His, his point is that why would you list not that? Which I mean, okay. Me, so we, am I going to look down and say, you look a little tweaked? I want you to. <laughs> well, that's what it says. Passing the physical at the discretion of the staff board. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark, you're not strong enough to serve. We can mark these up on that. And you're going to add it to the list for a second. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Do you remember the list? We actually have a list, thank God. Or uh, we never have an agenda that wasn't just Brian. <laughs> uh, okay. We have an action. Let's move on to the next thing, shall we? All right. Uh, next up is review of the dilapidated building ordinance and enforcement. So, uh, one of your supplements here the dilapidated building property inspection report. Is this new? My first crack at yeah. for conducting a dilapidated building or dilapidated. So we have an ordinance for dilapidated buildings. Yep. Uh, it's actually, you know, a number of pages. 
Did that you... one's actually on the town website. It is. And I, to make the form, after I made it up to some basic oh identifying information, um, after I made up some basic identifying information, I just went into the criteria in our ordinance of what is a dilapidated building and copied that out. I think the language could use to be cleared up in here, um, but it is very defensible right now. It's language copied straight out of the ordinance. So this, this form is based on? On our ordinance. Okay. <laughs> we didn't identify in the ordinance who the enforcement offices were, correct? Uh, we, I, if I recall, I don't believe that we did. I think that we identified that the select board would designate enforcement officers. Okay. And it says authority, the ordinance to regulate nuisance properties is adopted by the select board pursuant blah, 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 and shall supersede and replace all other ordinances in entirety of the town. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that's not right. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. Uh, I believe that what that is is that the select board can't designate anybody to perform the inspections. I would recommend, uh, I don't think it's in the ordinance itself, but I would recommend that we designate our health officers to do the inspection. Do you want me to read part of this, actually? I can read the inspection section and the hearing and enforcement. Are you interested? It's important to know who can enforce. Yep, okay. Um, upon at least 10 days of advance written notice, the owner of the premises, the select owner of the premises, the select board shall convene a public hearing to consider and act upon the inspection report of the inspection official. At such hearing, the select board shall allow testimony and evidence from the owner and or tenant of the premises uh, or property, town officials, agents, employees, and the public relating to the condition of the premises. Following such hearing, the select board shall deliberate and may determine that the premises constitutes a public nuisance based on specific findings. In the event the select board determines that the premises con constitute a public nuisance, it shall direct that the owner thereof produce and deliver to the select board a plan and schedule of remediation and abatement, such, uh, such submission to be made within a reasonable time frame established by the select board, but no less than 10 days of receipt from the select board findings. In the event the owner's remediation and abatement plan is accepted and approved by the select board, the owner shall implement and said plan immediately and shall complete the same within the time limits imposed by the select board. In the event the owner fails to submit a plan of remediation and abatement in accordance with subsection B, uh, uh, which is what I just read, um, if the owner or if the owner fails to plan to draft a plan accepted by the select board, or if the owner fails to comply with subsection C, the town shall. Uh, the town shall proceed to enforce this ordinance as provided herein and shall seek injunction relief, enforcement remedies, and penalties as permitted by law, including, without limitation, abatement of common law nuisances, abatement of public health hazards, repair or demolition of structures determined to be in violation of this ordinance, enforcement and foreclosure of liens for unpaid fees imposed under section eight hereof and recovery in a civil action for remediation, mitigation and abatement costs incurred to the town. In addition to being subject to penalties imposed for violation, violating this ordinance in order an owner whose property is found to be in violation or non-compliance of section 60 hereof shall be liable, liable for all costs incurred to the town under section 6D and for fees imposed under section eight, payment of which shall be secured by a lien on the property in favor of the town in the same manner and to the same extent as taxes assessed on the ground list. And all procedures and remedies to collect taxes shall apply to the collection of those costs, fees and penalties. Provided, however, the town provides notice to the owner in accordance with statute law uh, prior to incurring these fees and costs. Then there's an appeal process and additional fees. So this is not an ordinance that <coughs> involves the issuance of a ticket. 
I don't see anything about. So the first offense, okay, violations, penalties. Violations of this ordinance shall constitute a civil ordinance violation and may be punishable by, by the following penalties. The first offense, first offense for violation of any provisions of this ordinance or any order issued pursuant to sections D, 60 or E hereof shall be punishable by a fine of no less than $200. The waiver fee in lieu of a civil penalty for any person who declines to contest a municipal complaint or any order issued pursuant to section 60 or E hereof for a first offense shall be $100. Second offense, $400. Uh, the waiver fee in lieu of a civil penalty for any person who declines to contest a municipal complaint or any order hereof, second offense shall be $200. The third offense, $600, and then $400. Offenses shall be counted on a calendar year basis. Each day of violation continues to constitute, constitute a separate offense. In the event of a waiver is not paid by the owner, the select board may, at its discretion, seek enforcement of the ordinance by injunction or other appropriate relief and collection of any penalties, assessments, charges, or amounts due under this ordinance by bringing a civil action in the Judicial Bureau of the Mount Superior Court against the owner of the nuisance property that is the subject of an, uh, an order of monetary fine issued here under in accordance with statute. So it has an escalating fee. Um, back here, yes, inspection. Okay, section official. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. As used in this ordinance, the term inspection official shall mean the how town health officer, assistant health officer, or such other person so designated and appointed by the select board from time to time to enforce or execute the provisions of this ordinance. So it's health officer. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was was a health officer or if just the recommendation was that it be the health officer. So would it be the municipal ordinance bureau review that And if they actually issue they're issuing They need to have a number. They have a number. They do not have a number. They don't. Only uh, Tracy does. Tracy does. Well, I would suggest that one of the motions we make tonight would be to authorize the other two health officers, deputy health officers, to be issuing officials under the Municipal Ordinance Bureau. Is that how they become official? Is by us? They can't issue a ticket unless it is recorded in the Municipal Ordinance Bureau. So Rosemary has to send in a form with their name on it, and then they get an official number and a ticket book. And anytime they issue a ticket for any offense um, of any ordinance that we authorize them to enforce, they would write their name and ticket number on the ticket. I got you. So you're essentially motioning, suggesting a motion so that Rosemary, submit that form. I will make a motion that we authorize. Who should we authorize? BJ and Dean Locke. BJ and Dean Locke. BJ Lock to be issuing officials under the Municipal Ordinance Bureau. Okay. Motion. Second. A second. Discussion. Do they also serve as our animal control officers? Yes. So we should, I know we had them on probation for six months or something uh, before appointing them as constables, but- That was over a year ago. Yeah, they should also be considered 
appointment to the constables, and then they would ever they'd be able to write tickets in that capacity as well. And, and that form would be they could they could enforce any ordinance to go right for the reelection. We bless them. We bless them before the ticket or after the ticket? Do they come to us and say, yeah. I'm thinking about when they were holding, they would give us a certain. We have nothing to do with the tickets. I, that's what I'm trying to do. get to the bottom. Of. Yeah. So, with respect to this ordinance, no, 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 sorry about that. No, go ahead. Uh, with respect to this ordinance, there is not uh, the way that the ticketing works would be that they would they find the ability to do an inspection. They bring it to the select board and say there's a problem with this building. The owner of the building has an opportunity to also appear before the select board and make their case as to it's not real, really a problem, everything's okay. Whatever argument they that they might have with our complaint, the select board finds against them. They submit the plan for how they're going to make how they're going to remediate. Tickets are issued for people who fail to remediate. Or follow the plan. Well, and, and once issued, right. once the tickets issued, it's out of our hands. Right. But if tickets are not issued, just the first time they go and visit a property under this ordinance, there might be other things that uh, that are going on. But for dilapidated buildings, there is a hearing before a ticket is issued, and it's before us and the public. Yes, as I recall. That's it. Yes, it is at a public meeting uh, where the, the property owner has received notice uh, and can attend. But in the end, we're making the decision. You're not making the decision to find them. You're making the decision whether they have a dilapidated building or not. And making orders, stipulations on what needs to be done. Yeah, if you're ordering them to remedy it. And then if they if we do determine it's a dilapidated building then automatically this fine process kicks off or that's when the health officer kicks it off after the hearing if they do not comply with our order part of your order will be to give them a timeline of what we want to see and when we want to see them. <clears throat> tickets are issued if they fail to meet that after ten, so after 10 days they don't meet the mitigation plan then the ticket is issued by the health officer because they check to determine whether or not Correct. it's mitigated. Um, um, it's not necessarily 10 days, it's a minimum of 10 days. So you, you can't hold a hearing and say, you know, we want to until after tomorrow. 10, some point after 10 days. Right. And then, okay, and then we hold the hearing, and then they haven't mitigated. And at that point, they can issue a ticket. And when the ticket is issued, the complete, the complete, well, not the complaint, uh, the person, the owner, can appeal and try to get a waiver on the fee, and that's when the fee gets reduced. Yes. If the board approves the waiver for whatever reason, basically cuts the fee in half. Well, the issuing official issues a ticket, it goes to the judicial bureau. That's after, well, that says after the third complaint, right? Uh, no, that starts. Uh, you can ask first. for a waiver on any fee, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not super familiar with how the waiver system works. You're only entitled to the waiver if you agree to the if you plead guilty, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see. Well, we still have a motion, right, don't we? Yeah. In the second. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, and our motion was to give um, Dean and BJ authority. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And, and I would just circle back that they also should be appointed as constables. Is that a motion? We also move. Second. 
Are they not already? They're not officially gone. We, we put them on probation. Right, I understand that. I thought it was like six months and then they automatically became. No, we, we never followed through with it. So the only possible we have is Tracy. Tracy. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I just have it unanimously. Yeah. We should probably notify that. Yeah. Pretty sure BJ is watching. I think we should send in something to the state. Do they have to sign it? Rosemary, do they have to sign it, or is it just something you pop, you fill in? Is that after they get approved? So, Rosemary, will you take care of notifying them if you need to? Can you do that for us? Yeah, I've got to see if there's any information I need to get their numbers for them. Yeah, okay. Do a background check. <laughs> That's actually uh, a good point. <laughs> That's a really good point. We yeah, should actually do a background check. Uh, we did do a background check on uh, these. On these two. Yeah. Okay. Good, because that would be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, what were you going to say? Well, some of this inspection would require access to the building. It basically all will. Yes. And if it's a rental unit, then we have certain authority for access. If it's not, and the landowner denies access, uh, and yet from the road, there are properties that you would probably be able to determine are dilapidated, but we would not be able to fill this out and answer it. There would be a lot of sections that we can't we can't properly answer without access to the but property. We could Just get a court order giving us access. You just have to go for a search warrant basically to get access to stuff. We could pursue access that way or uh, we might just ask for remedies on the things that we can see. You know, that would be a board decision based on the circumstances when you when the case is brought to you about, you know, the inspection officer saying, I saw these things. I wasn't able to see these other things. Uh, you know, you could order as part of your remedy, you know, provide access to our officer in order to finish this. Or we could seek a search warrant to have it. Yeah. yeah, it, it is not a, it is not specifically addressed. Uh, there is addressed in there how we will proceed if we can't make contact, mm -hmm. you know, if the person's not answering the phone, not acknowledging us, you know, how we'll proceed in those circumstances, but you know, yeah, somebody who has no trespass signs up, yep. you know, won't let us on their property, uh, we'll have, we have less. But uh, that's true of like health orders too. Yes, health orders are much harder to enforce on a private residents yeah um i would just i mean i like the form personally i think it's good that we just pulled things direct from the ordinance and understanding that there are some things we're just not going to be able to answer i guess the question i would have is well first i would say brian can we get a copy of the ordinance out to the health officers yep. um and ask for their feedback on this form yes they've seen the ordinance they haven't seen this form uh, but i understand both, but both together and, yeah exactly uh, you know yeah well i i'm imagining that we'll try and do one together uh, probably a couple of test cases we can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i think there's uh, plenty uh, actually i guess the other part i want to bring up about this about for enforcement is uh, when with Robin, uh, when she was here, we had discussed um, 
identifying properties on our grant list that have been listed as under construction for more than uh, I think it was five years. Uh, and be, those being kind of our first targets because those are the very well could be dilapidated buildings and that's a kind of fair application for it that it's not like you know, I think if we can all think of something that are more visible and that we can see easily I would prefer the under half construction not be our first target. Okay. I could personally care less. <laughs> I think there's, I think that there are much, I don't think that the, the properties that are under construction for five years or more are our biggest worry right now. I think our, we have some pretty, we have some structures that are in really poor shape that would be ample uh, opportunity for those properties. Our belief is that the properties that are listed as under construction and have had no movement on them probably will be those properties that you're talking about. But it gives us an objective measure of how do we identify this property for enforcement? You know, we've got an objective measure of how we're, we're doing that. And we think that there's going to be a large overlap between uh, properties that most people are thinking about and those that have. I think like one of the questions here is, has the property been designated as uninhabitable or unsafe by a health order? Now I can think of some properties that there are outstanding health orders on. I think that would be where we would start. I agree. I think that's a higher on the list than under construction. I mean, that's a good wraparound down the road to just assessment value reasons and listers to carry. So this all depends on how the listers are looking at that and considering it. <laughs> I'm a contractor. Right. I, I totally see what you're saying that under construction in the general parlance means a building a house. Under construction in the Lister's province might be one of the properties on Route 100 C that's been gutted and is uninhabited and nothing has taken place in the last row. Yeah, those are, I hear you. The thing that I worry about, like, I don't want that house that doesn't have siding on it to be on the list, even right. though it's totally a little livable house. Yeah. There's really no concern other than people don't like the fact it doesn't have siding. Like, that's not a good reason. Yeah, uh, there isn't a, a a perfect solution about how to pick houses, but the lights. Yeah, <laughs> and we have had complaints <clears throat> around. Well, there's one property we had a lot of complaints about, but there are other properties that we have had very polite, and once in a while, somebody shows up at a meeting and says, "Reminder, you have this ordinance." Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, okay, so right right now you'll go get feedback. Is it, does anyone have concerns about the form? I, uh, I think it's a little bit wordy, but I, I think that it's also very safe and defensible. Wordy oh, in that you just can't. This is language used in the ordinance. So if we can demonstrate these things, we can enforce our ordinance. Okay. I mean, I'm not hearing any feedback, so I'd say get feedback from the health officers and then let's okay. use it as a form. We already can we just provide it to Brian. Uh, I suppose. Hopefully, we don't have feedback if it's direct from the ordinance, though. Do you have concerns right now, Duncan? Uh, I, it's the first time I've looked at it, so. Okay, okay. I, hear, I hear you. Um, if you do have feedback, yeah, you, why don't you send it to me and uh, I'll push it off to Brian and you'll get feedback right from all health officers. And that's obviously open to everybody. So if you have feedback, send it to me, I'll pass it along. I think it's a great, a great and needed part of doing this though, is having an inspection checklist that can be Reviewed and relied upon by the board, and make you know, that was the one to this 
be accused of being something else. That was our big hurdle. It is. I didn't feel like we were in a good position to defend ourselves. And I think this makes the difference. All right. Maybe, um, so, sorry, along those lines, you guys got me thinking, I was trying to move on, but, but now I'm going to say it. Uh, along those lines, maybe we should have a reason that, that we checked the property, and maybe the reason can be, it should be a drop list, a populated drop list, probably, and the reasons could be complaint, we've received a complaint, it could just be single, um, or under construction for more than five years. I mean, are there other, we should probably think about, yeah. or, or any one of the items from the ordinance is clearly visible from the road. Attractive uses. Yeah, we should probably get a pre-populated list of what those are and have a reason for the inspection. Right, is there a difference between the description of the property and the description of the inspection target? The description of the property, I would think one of the discussions we had around this uh, in when we were forming the ordinance was that we didn't want this to be used to go after, you know, an old farm that's got a historic barn or something on somewhere on the site that's not in use anymore. So I can think of a situation and what I, what the mean by this is I can think of a situation where we don't want it to apply to the whole property, but there's something on the property that we feel needs attention. You know, an outbuilding or uh, something like that. So I, I think that it is useful to, to identify exactly what we're expecting on the property. Parcels of more than one home on them, back to time, things like that. I, I'm not sure how we would identify that. Uh, I don't think of, I can't think of a, a, rec a recorded way of identifying. Um, I've we seen some that are a mobile home on a property. What we're dealing with, yeah. I, I can think of a number of yeah. examples of mobile homes that are dilapidated, but I, I can't think of a good way of cataloging how many there are, or where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Now, all dilapidated properties in the same Okay, so next up, I think we got, so we have feedback from through me. You already have some feedback. I know, I'll collect feedback from the officers. Perfect. Next up is the tax room. So we have about our grand list. Is it a little bit faster than estimated? That leaves us with a tax rate increase of a little bit over a cent, uh, and we were estimating about two cents. So, we have a pretty small increase this year. Uh, and I think Better news, Rosemary. Is the school tax rate went down about ninety cents. Really? Who? Okay. Thank God. Wow. And is that why? Why is that, Rosemary? I'm assuming because they might have used some ARPA money. That's what I'm guessing too. The state, the state, it's the state. We don't have state tax actual. Two for one point. Yeah. 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 They are. There's a lot of discussion about it. I think they're just reading the tea leaves. I think they're pretty far from having an agreement, but they are working on a new funding model. So is the total local tax rate that we're looking at the 0.8488? Or move their tax rate to 0.8488? Yes. 
four here too. I was hoping Eric was going to do it. He's on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. Sign one. Yep. Send it on down. Um, the school tax rate was about that last year, Mark. I, don't know. I mean, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was really high. The school tax rate last year. Last year. So I like, I feel like this nets it out. <laughs> Please sign here. I'm always amazed. I know it's going to pay me It's the bill that's painful. My butt is usually now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's circulating. Uh, next up, we've got the Better Road Strength Agreement. Uh, so it starts on page 35 of the packet. Uh, this is for our work on Lentway Lane. So this is a number of ditching, uh, a few covert improvements. Uh, and some bank statements. What what page did you say? Uh, starts on packet page thirty. That's using thirty eight hundred dollars of our money. This is uh, yeah. This does require a management. Uh, I don't see how it's designated as um, They are. We've got some uh, uh, according to our most recent uh, erosion culvert and erosion report. Um, Ledway Lane is one of the sites targeted with uh, the most severe classification for uh, improvements needed. Given the proximity of the river and the rate of erosion, we've got some pretty serious erosion in a couple spots. Uh, and it, it's bad enough to it, when we had a major storm, uh, there was a Halloween storm, it was the Another storm we had, uh, but Lenway Lake had really bad, uh, really bad roads in New York. Oh, it's not too far to move ground. No. Move to accept the grant and authorize either Beth or Brian to sign. Want to pick one? Either. Well, it appears that his name is on the more detail, but there is nothing under the how about that? Sure. Okay. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, I will point out this is probably the, not the last project we're going to have on Lenway Lane. Um, the road graph, there are a couple areas that are identified in our erosion report that the road graph won't reach. You know, that closer to the river, there are some spots that are probably going to be stored up uh, at some point that will, would not be eligible for these expenses. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further, other further discussion? Thanks, Brian. Uh, on that. Uh-oh. Yeah, out. On what specifically? On the grant, no. Oh, okay. Well, I would like to point out that one way lane, I believe, on uh, campus, yeah, is a class four road past where the town gravel storage is. So we should be maintaining that as a class four road. Yes. No, this I know it's maintained as a class three road in the winter time. These improvements are only on the class three portion. Why are you looking at me like that? It's class three to the gravel. Right to the yard of the end of Lane. Maybe you should have looked at the mileage certificate when you sent that in. Yeah, we approved that many, many years ago. Why, why is that not? Back in the 90s. That's not shown on oh, this. That's so the seats. Mine looks a different. Flex by that. 
If it's not on the minus, do we get ratio? We so that should be adjusted so that yeah. we're at least reimbursed appropriately. Right. I think you have some competition for you your job. Into that, right? Yeah, I will. Well, that. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nothing. Hey, I, I study the rules. I know. Believe me, I'm aware. Okay, so who's got that? Brian or Rosemary? We should have it. Brian. Yeah. Brian. <laughs> Come on, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't checked into it. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that it is. I know it's class three. If it's not reflected. Would that uh, impact our ability to, if maps aren't updated or for whatever reason it's not filed correctly, would that impact our ability to get grants? It would impact the amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. on a yearly basis. On money you for state. Yeah, yeah, I hear you on the state. But well, under water roads, it shouldn't really. Well, they won't. They, won't give they wouldn't pay us to do maintenance on. They wouldn't give us a grant. And they, would, they wouldn't pay us to do maintenance on the class four section of Glen Whaley. That's follow up. We dealt with this item. Yep, so we're good. I mean, so we'll, we'll follow up and check out who is class three. Okay. All right. That takes us through uh, to our. our, our Open session, we get into our executive session. Um, I'm going to suggest that we do the additional executive session communications from our attorney first. Okay. Um, so there we go. I'm going to recommend that we do the executive session to deal with the communications from our attorney. First, with with the bank or stormwater? No, uh, the the added. Oh, that's right. You you we added an executive session oh, okay. for that additional was, communication. That was for tax abatement. Yep. Okay. okay, so I motion that the board find a premature disclosure communications with our attorney may place the town the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, abstain. Ayes have it. And then I motion that the board exempt, enter into executive session to discuss attorney client communications on the tax appeal litigation that the town may be a party of. Yep. As well by 1 BSA 313A1, inviting Brian and Rose in the next time. Um, we have a motion. Do a second. Do a second. Duncan. Duncan second. Oh, you seconded. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstain. Ayes have it. We are in executive session at the right time. 919.